What's going on? I'm FBL Nzagi. Welcome back to another video today. It's my team selection video for game week five. I'm going to talk about my transfers and captain, who I'm looking to bring into the team and who I'm looking to sell as well. I've got two free transfers, so I am looking to make some moves. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. We're so close to 3,000 subscribers. I would absolutely love to hit 3,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, it would really mean a lot if you could do so. Before we take a look at my team, I just wanna say a massive shout out to Jude Cumberland. Hey Jude, thank you so much for the support on the channel. I hope your team is going well. I hope you're beating your dad and I hope that you're not a Chelsea supporter. I hope that you see the light and pick Manchester United. But without any further ado, let's take a look at the team for game week five. Starting off at the back, I've got Turner in goals this week and I am benching Pickford. I feel like that's a pretty straightforward one. Pickford is coming up against Arsenal at home. I don't expect a clean sheet in that game. I think we could see some negative points for Pickford. And then Turner plays Burnley at home. That's a much better fixture. I think that in most cases, I would be playing Turner over your other goalkeeper. If you've got Onana, for example, I would be playing Turner over Onana, who comes up against Brighton at home. Nottingham Forest have signed another goalkeeper now, so I do expect Turner to lose his place in the next couple of game weeks, but I'm confident that he will play against Burnley at home. And that's really all I need him for. You can see he's got City and Brentford in the next two fixtures. So I wouldn't be playing Turner in either of those games. And then I think when I play my wild card, I'm likely to make a few goalkeeper switches. I think I've got my eye on someone like Ariola as my 4 million goalkeeper, but Turner looks good this week. Ben Chilwell comes up against Bournemouth away. I'm not too confident of a clean sheet. I think Bournemouth particularly at home, are a decent attacking team. I thought they were unlucky to not score against Spurs. And I don't think Chelsea are as good at dominating football matches as Spurs at the moment. So I'm expecting Chelsea to give up a few chances. I think there'll be a couple of goals in that game. I am hopeful of attacking returns for Ben Chilwell. 5.8 now, he's had a couple of price rises, which is nice because Pickford has gone down to 4.4. I've lost a little bit of cash on the likes of Gabriel and Havertz. Bruno and Rashford have all dropped in price, so it's nice when your players start to go up. Ruben Diaz, he gets the start as well against West Ham away. Ruben Diaz doesn't have much attacking threat, and the clean sheet chances are just 39% in this game for Man City. So I'm not too confident of a clean sheet. And there's some chance that I bench Ruben Diaz for a Stupinan. You can see that a Stupinan is currently on my bench. And I've got Gabriel. I'll talk about Gabriel in just a moment. But with Ruben Diaz, what you get with him is he's probably the most nailed Man City defender. Gvardiol, Ake, Akanji, there's all an element of doubt and risk about these guys. And that's why I decided to pay that 0.5 extra and go for Ruben Diaz over Gvardiol because I just know that in nine times out of 10, Ruben Diaz will be starting for Man City. And it's very rare for him to ever be subbed on. So I don't think that Man City will keep a clean sheet against West Ham. And if I don't expect a stupid man to keep a clean sheet against Manchester United either. Maybe I swap Ruben Diaz for a stupid man and just go for the chance of an attacking return. But Ruben Diaz is in the team at the moment. And then Gabriel, a little bit of a surprise. He's been a nightmare to own so far this season, just 1.3 points per match. And he's barely started for Arsenal. He's been coming off the bench a lot. He did start in their last game against Manchester United. He played okay in that match. I thought he did quite well. He earned the praise of Mikel Arteta. He's gone on international duty. There was a risk or slight rumor, I should say, of an injury in the first game for Brazil. But then he went and played 90 minutes in the next game for Brazil. Now, he has been away. He's obviously flown back. So there's a bit of travel fatigue potentially for Gabriel as well. But Arsenal don't have too many options in defense right now. We've got injuries to Timber, which is long-term. Thomas Partey looks to be out injured long-term now as well. So I think what we'll see from Arsenal against Everton is the same back four that we saw against Manchester United. Ben White on the right, Saliba right centre-back, um, Gabriel, I should say, not Kaliba. That'd be an interesting mix. But Gabriel left centre-back and then Zinchenko inverting from the left. So I think with Zinchenko fit now, we should see Gabriel start. And I really like Arsenal's chances of a clean sheet away against Everton. A team who's generated okay XG 
but they just have struggled to score. They've got their new signing Beto now, who played quite well in the last match against Sheffield United, but I don't think Everton posed too much of an attacking threat. So I'm likely to play Gabriel as things stand. In midfield, Mbumo is one player that I'm actually contemplating benching once I talk to you about my transfers and who's likely to come in and who's going to leave the team. He's been great so far this season, 8.2 points per match. His points per match has exceeded his price, which is quite rare. And also, if a player is scoring the same amount of points as their price, they're doing very well, and he's exceeding that. So it goes to show what a great asset Mbumo is. The fact that he's on penalties as well makes me want to play him in every game. Even if it's a difficult game, there's always a chance of penalties. So I think I will start Mbumo. He's got Everton and Forest to come after these two fixtures. So it's a tough away game against Newcastle, but on the other side of that, Brentford's fixtures are really nice. Raheem Sterling came into the team last week, underwhelmed. He should have had an assist for Jackson I still don't know how Jackson missed that chance. Bournemouth away, I think that's going to be a good game for Chelsea. Bournemouth like to try and play out from the back. They do make quite a lot of mistakes. I think Sterling could profit. Aston Villa at home is not the easiest game, but then they've got Fulham after that in game week seven. So happy to hold on to Sterling. He didn't perform that well last week, but he's just come into the team. I'm not going to knee-jerk him out suddenly. I don't have the money to go from Sterling to Son. If I had that money, I think I would be very tempted, but because I don't, I don't think there's any real need to move Sterling out. His stats are still good. He's still getting him into the right positions. The eye test looks good. He would have been on very similar amount of points to Madison and Rashford last week if Jackson had put that chance away. So no need to panic on Sterling just yet. Bruno Fernandes has been sold by so many managers this week. He's down to 8.4 million. I think that's such an unwise move to sell Bruno and to sell Rashford. United's fixtures over the next four or five game weeks are fantastic. Brighton at home, Defensively, Brighton haven't been great. United have this fantastic record at Old Trafford as well. And then they've got Burnley and Crystal Palace in the next two game weeks. So I'm very happy to hold on to Bruno. There are question marks around who's going to play right wing. It could be Bruno, but I still don't think that's a negative from an FPL perspective. If he's playing right wing, you know that he will try and kind of invert and come into the center of the pitch. He can put in some great crosses for Hoyland and for Rashford. And he just kind of picks up space in between the left back and the left side of center back. So I think he'll do quite well. And with a Stupinan being so advanced, I think there's potential there for Fernandez, even if he plays on the right wing. Rashford, again, I think what we've seen in the last couple of weeks when he's played left wing, we've seen Rashford back to what he was like last season. He's not as good when he's playing through the middle. I really hope Ten Hag does not play Rashford on the right. I hope that he sticks with Rashford on the left, plays Hoyland through the middle, and then maybe he plays Bruno, maybe he plays Garnacho on the right. There's a question mark around who plays in that position for United, but I just hope the answer is not Rashford because he's so much better from the left. Now, Saka is one player that I am considering to sell, and I'm looking to sell him potentially for Son. It's not because Saka is a bad asset by any means. In the next three fixtures, he's got Everton and Bournemouth. He's got Spurs at home in game week six. But in game week five, he's got Everton away, and then he's got Bournemouth away. And Saka is not as good an FPL asset away from home than he is at the Emirates. His stats over the last couple of seasons, there's been a really big difference in the stats that he's put up at home versus away. So... I'm wondering whether I could chase the upside in Son, who in the next three fixtures, it's probably in favor of Saka, who's got the better fixtures. So in the next three, Saka's got Everton, Spurs, Bournemouth. Son has Sheffield United, and then he's got Arsenal and Liverpool. So in the next three, I think Saka has the better fixtures. But if we extend that out to game week 10, when I'm likely to wildcard, Son's fixtures are much better than Saka. So Saka goes into Man City, and then he plays Chelsea as well, where Son plays Luton and Fulham. So if we extend the range out, Son's fixtures are much better. He's 8.7 now, so he's a lot closer in price to Son. There's some rumors around Saka potentially carrying an injury, carrying a niggle. 
But he's so important to that Arsenal team. They've already dropped points this season. I don't think we'll see Arteta bench Saka. He might come off early in games and the Champions League is about to start. But with Arteta really gunning for the Premier League this season and the pace that City set being so frenetic, I don't think we'll see Saka drop out of the starting 11 for Arsenal anytime soon. But I'm wondering whether I can gain an advantage by going Saka to Son. I'm happy to keep the United assets. And if I was going to bring Son in in midfield, it would be at this stage for Saka. Up front, Jackson, I've had him since the start of the season. He's been quite frustrating. Three yellow cards and just one goal, just 2.5 points per match. He will get the Bournemouth game for me, but I am reassessing my options next week. I'm looking at potentially selling Jackson for Morris, who has the double game week in seven. He's also got Wolves as well at home next game week. And then that would allow me to fund Trippier in for someone like Martinez or Gabriel. So that's what I'm looking at next week, but I'm happy to give Jackson the Bournemouth away fixture. And then Haaland, he's up to 92% ownership now, 9.8 points per match. He's going to be my captain this week. Unless I bring Son in, then I would be very tempted to go for Son. I think West Ham away is a difficult fixture. And like Saka, Haaland's best performances and best FPL scores have come at home. 9.8 points per match, though, this season. That is a scary number. And if you're talking about his captaincy and his effective ownership, you're potentially starting 18, 19 points behind the rest of the pack. So I'm not entirely convinced that I would captain Son if I had him. It's a very close call, and maybe I would err on the side of caution and just go with Haaland and be content enough to have Son in my team if I wanted to play it safe. But at the moment, I've got Haaland, I don't have Son, so it's a pretty straightforward captaincy decision for me. So I've got two free transfers. I've got 0.1 in the bank. There's a few things that I could do here. I've already spoken about Son, but if I was to bring Son into the team, it would require two transfers because Rashford has dropped, Son has increased. I would need to find 0.2 from somewhere to make that transfer. So it'd be a downgrade in defense to enable a Rashford or a Saka to Son. And then I'd be using my two free transfers. And as I said, Newcastle play Sheffield United next week. I think I wanna have two free transfers next week to potentially downgrade Jackson, who plays Villa at home, and buy Morris, who's got Wolves at home, and then use that money to upgrade a defender to Kieran Trippier. Newcastle are about to go on a fantastic run of fixtures, and defensively, I think it's really important to get one or two of their assets in, and Trippier is clearly the best defensive asset. So I don't think I wanna use two free transfers this week. And I can, in my transfer plans, get Son, in game week eight for Saka. So I can keep Saka for Everton and for Bournemouth. And then in game week eight, I can sell him when Arsenal play City for Son, who plays Luton, and Son could be my captain that week. So I'm not saying no to Son forever. I just don't think Son in for my team works this week. But I still think that if you've got the free transfers and you can bring Son in, I still think that's an okay transfer to make. So what I am looking to do with my transfers is to sell Martinez from Manchester United and to buy Udogi. And that gives me a little bit of cash in the bank, around 0.3, which I will need for my future transfers. I was very close to going for Pedro Porro, but he's 0.3 more expensive than Udogi. And getting Pedro Porro in, whilst it's exciting, it's a bit more of a differential. I like Porro's attacking threat. If you can, if you can make Porro work for your team financially, I think I prefer Porro over Udogi, even with the rotation fears, because if you're bringing a Spurs defender into your team this week, you probably won't need to play them in game week six or game week seven, or you would hope that you wouldn't have to. So you might have a Stupinan, or you might have a Ben Chilwell, or you might have a Newcastle defender who has a really nice fixture in game week six and game week seven. And that's the case for me. What I can do is bring a Spurs defender in, whether it's Porro or Udogi this week, get that Sheffield United at home fixture. And then next week I can bring Trippier in for Sheffield United. And I can also play a Stupinan who's got Bournemouth at home. So bringing Udogi in, those fixtures against Arsenal and Liverpool, they don't worry me because I can have him on the bench. 
And that's why I think if you've got the funds, Pedro Porro could be a really exciting differential punt against Sheffield United. But in my case, I need that little bit of extra cash. And so I'm going to go for Udogi. Very likely my transfer will be Martinez to Udogi. Now, as I mentioned, the other transfer I'm considering is Saka to Son. But if I was going to make that move, I couldn't afford Martinez to Udogi. I would probably need to sell Martinez or Gabriel to a Newcastle defender. Sven Botman would be my pick, but we don't really know whether he's fit and ready to play this weekend. And I don't expect Eddie Howe will provide any kind of clear indication as to whether Botman is fit and ready to go. And making the Son move now means I can't get Trippier next week. You might think Son versus Sheffield United is better than Trippier versus Sheffield United, but Trippier in the long term is more important for my team and I can get Son in game week eight. So it's really a case of Saka over the next three and Trippier versus Son over the next three and a Botman or a Dan Byrne. And I prefer Saka and Trippier over Son and a Dan Byrne, for example. So I like Son. I think it's a great transfer. It just doesn't work for my team. I'm likely to buy him in game week eight. And my transfer this week is very likely to be Martinez to you, Doggy. But let's take a look at what my transfers look like over the next few game weeks. All right, this is my team for game week five. You can see I've made the Martinez to Udogi transfer, and I've got Udogi in the starting 11. Now, I could play Ruben Diaz over Gabriel, or I could play Ruben Diaz and Gabriel over Imbumo. I'm not entirely sure which way I'll go just yet, but let's leave Imbumo in the team for now. We go across to game week six. Now, I've, I've still got my two free transfers, which you can see up there. And what I'm likely to do here in game week six is to move Jackson on for Morris, who's got Wolves at home. And then he's got the double game week in game week seven. Nottingham Forest away in game week nine is also quite nice. So bring Morris into the team and I've got 1.9 million in the bank. I'll play a Stupinan here with Bournemouth at home and I'm very likely to go Gabriel finally out of the team to Trippier. I'll play Ruben Diaz at home to Nottingham Forest. I could bench Chilwell, who's got a tough fixture at home against Aston Villa. And those are my two free transfers ready to go for game week six. If we go across to game week seven, this is the double game week for Luton and Burnley. I've got a couple of options here. I could roll my transfer because I think my team looks quite good. I can bench Chilwell. Sorry, I can bench a stupid end for Chilwell. And I think that team looks perfectly fine. I can roll the free transfer here. But if I'm feeling a little bit spicy, what I can do is to sell the stupid end for Ryan Giles from Luton, who's looked quite good so far this season. So I can play Giles over Chilwell, for example. I've got 0 0.8 million in the bank. And then, I'll call, then we go across to game week eight. This is the week where I would sell Saka for Son and I could play Chilwell away against Burnley. Udogi gets the game away against Luton and then I can play Archer against Fulham rather than Morris at home against Tottenham Hotspur. So I think that team looks pretty good for game week eight. And then in game week nine, what I'm looking to do is this is the last week likely before I hit the wildcard button, Sterling to Gibbs White, and I can play Ruben Diaz against Brighton, or I can even play Giles, the attacking defender against Nottingham Forest. And I can play Morris, who's got Forest as well there, and then Pickford can be benched. So I think that team looks, again, quite good. Son's got a good fixture against Fulham at home. Rashford and, and Bruno Fernandes had Sheffield United away. Another reason why I really wanted to hold them this week and not play the wild card in game week nine. And then we go across to game week 10. And that's very likely when I'm going to hit the wild card button and start to target the likes of Liverpool and Aston Villa. So those are my transfer plans over the next few weeks. Son is likely to come into the team, just not this week. I just don't think it makes the most sense for my team. I'm looking to bring Son in around game week eight, play the wild card in game week 10, and it gives me two players for double game week seven. Now you might say it's two Luton players, 
But with Everton away and Burnley at home, I think that's quite nice as a double game week pairing. So very happy to have those guys in. Haven't taken a hit, and that's another reason why I only want to use one of my two free transfers this week. That's it for today's video. Let me know what you think of this team and my transfer plans in the comment section below. Also, let me know what transfers you're making this week. Are you going to bring Son into the team? Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you tune in for the deadline stream tomorrow. Very much looking forward to that. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.